So you have a or several old cell phones, what now? Well, you give them to an electronics recycling center to make more products, connect to a giant nerd botnet for the furthering of science, yes, that's a real thing, link below. Or you could toss them into the ocean where the turtles will gobble up the batteries, storing the potential energy when they need to make a quick escape from predators. That last one may be a lie and a terrible idea, but there are literally dozens of options for you when it comes to removing or reusing your old cell phones. Here's a few uses that maybe you haven't heard of, and at the end of the video, we'll quickly go over some more common ones. Here are the uses that we'll be going over in the video. I'll also put chapters below so you can skip around. As we get into each one, I'll give a brief overview, what I tried, what worked, what didn't, and then we'll move on to the next one. For the makeshift webcam, I use the Erium app. It was the first one that I tried actually, and it works fine. It does have a small watermark in the corner, so if you're really picky, there's a bunch of other apps you can choose from. Uh, I just hooked it up using a charging cable that can handle data transfers. Some cheap cables won't, so if it's not working at all, that is something to check. And next I pulled up Zoom just to see if it was compatible and if Zoom would even see it as a webcam, and it does. It was really easy to set up and worked just as well as any other webcam I've owned. I will say finding a place to prop it up was a bit challenging, but on a laptop I just placed it above the keyboard and on the desktop. Actually clamping one of those uh, bag clips, like to reseal chip bags, worked pretty well. I just placed the clamp on the top of my monitor and put the phone in between the handles at the top and it worked perfectly fine. Next is the security camera or baby monitor if you want to. Again, Alfred Camera was the first app that I tried and it works great. It's free and has a bunch of features you can use out of the box. The resolution is around 720 or 1080p, so nothing crazy. Maybe that can be improved uh, based on the phone that you're using but I believe that is the cap on the free version. Some things that surprised me were the features that were included, like being able to control the phone remotely. You can turn on night mode or the flashlight. You can talk through the phone remotely like a doorbell camera, and it has a very loud alarm depending on how high your phone can go. All in all, it's free and it works great. As I said, you can use it as a baby monitor, but there were other apps that I saw that were geared specifically for that purpose, so if that's something that interests you, just try a few out and see what works for you. Next is a wireless mouse and keyboard. This one is maybe a little bit more niche, like if your trackpad stopped working on your laptop and you need something right away, or maybe you don't have a keyboard for your tablet, or maybe you just can type faster on your phone than you can on a keyboard. Whatever the case, the free app I used is called Bluetooth Keyboard and Mouse. A straightforward name for a straightforward app. It connects like any other Bluetooth device, nothing fancy. The input lag was pretty minimal, which was surprising. The trackpad they have on the app is a little bit awkward to use, but besides that, it does exactly what it says it will. Next is using your old phone as a retro game emulator. I'm using emulator a bit loosely here, but I was very surprised at how many apps there were for this. A lot of them you do have to pay a few bucks for, or at least pay to unlock certain games. But there were several that were free that had dozens of games to play as soon as you open the app. The one I'm using here is called Retro Games 90s Console Games. A bit of a mouthful, but it is free and has a lot of content. I normally don't play a lot of games on my phone, but pulling up some of these nostalgic games was quite a bit of fun and brought back some good memories. Another cool thing I came across looking into this was the Smart Boy by Hyperkin. Basically, it turns your phone into a Game Boy and is compatible with the original cartridges. Obviously, it does cost money, but I figured I'd include it here if that piques your interest. Finally, last but most certainly not least, is watching ad-free YouTube on your TV. This one is near and dear to me. There's not many things more irritating, in my opinion, than putting on a video to watch and then having to skip through or be forced to watch ad after ad thrown at you by YouTube when you're just trying to watch content. I'm sure most of you are familiar with ad blocking on your computer or on your phone, but doing that on your TV is usually not as simple. So the easiest and cheapest solution specifically for your TV is to cast the videos to your TV screen or just mirror your phone screen on your TV. In this video, I'm using NewPipe, which is an app that pulls directly from YouTube, but has ad blockers built into the app itself. Unfortunately, it's not available in the normal app stores, so for simplicity, I would suggest using the Brave browser, which is available in all the app stores. Just make sure to turn on the appropriate blocking settings in the app settings, and make sure to watch the videos through the Brave app, not letting your phone switch to the YouTube app. 
Casting or screen mirroring is usually pretty simple. If you're having any issues, most TVs will have instructions in the connection menu or just do a quick search and you'll be able to connect in no time. One thing I will say, depending on your phone and TV, there may be black bars on the sides or it may minimize the screen a little bit, but you can always fiddle with your aspect ratios to make it full screen again. And either way, at least for me, being able to watch video after video on my TV uninterrupted is a lifesaver. Some other uses that I thought were pretty self-explanatory and didn't really warrant putting an explanation in the video. Uh, one of them was using your phone as a universal remote. There are apps, uh, universal remote apps that you can use to control your TV if you lose your remote or something like that. Another one was using it as an emergency lifeline. All phones are still required to call emergency services, at least in the US, so you can keep it for that purpose. Backing up photos or using it as a transfer device, kind of like an external hard drive if something's maybe too big to email or you want to get it from one computer to the other and it, and one is not connected to Wi-Fi or something like that, you can hook up your old phone, especially after you factory reset it, and you'll be able to load that with the, the photos or videos or whatever you have and then transfer it to a new device or then take that, plug it into a TV and play the, that media on the TV. The last one was as a dedicated music player. If you have a sound system or something like that in your house, uh, you can hook up your phone, an older phone, and just use it as a dedicated music player and just keep it with that, that sound system and then you're not using the uh, battery or data on your main phone. But that's about it for the other uses that I uh, came across. And that about wraps things up. Again, this is just a short list of some of the ways you can use your old phones that I thought were pretty useful, or maybe just to get you thinking about the ways that you can use the older but still useful technology and devices that we have laying around. Also, we've been throwing around the idea of making a whole separate, way more in-depth video on alternatives to YouTube, both ad-free and privacy-wise, and completely different alternative sites that we think facilitate media sharing better than YouTube does, and alternatives to every other social media site. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in seeing, let us know in the comments below. And if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up so we know how to gauge future videos. As always, thank you so much for watching. I am Ryan from the Device Casting Couch podcast and have a great day.